Here is a very interesting letter written in 1852 from St. Louis by Orson Pratt to Brigham Young. In this letter to Brigham Young, Orson Pratt claims that a Charles Thompson is writing a newspaper in which he is receiving revelations from a ghost or some sort of figure called Benini. Charles B. Thompson was a baptized Mormon under Joseph Smith, who claimed to be the lawful heir to the Mormon church after Joseph Smith's death. So as Charles B. Thompson is claiming to receive revelation from a ghost or a channeled spirit, or perhaps Joseph Smith himself, called Benini. Benini, a strange sort of name. Well, who is Benini? We'll find out, I suppose. So in this letter, Orson Pratt states, Charles B. Thompson is publishing a monthly paper in which many revelations are being printed, purportedly to be re revealed by the unknown personage calling himself Banini, which you will at once recognize as one of the fictitious names which Joseph substituted for the real names in certain revelations in the Book of Covenants. Now, Bimini, he is claiming Joseph Smith substituted for the real name in uh, the revelation in the Book of Covenants. So in the original Book of Covenants, we're going to have a Bimini. Looks as though Joseph Smith also used Bimini in the original Book of Covenants. Thompson is sending out his teachers, and they have already introduced many scenes in different points into the organization. Their committee, consisting of William Marks and others, have, I understood that William Marks is part of the Thompson group. When the Kirtland edition of the Book of Covenants, not Doctrine and Covenants as we have been led to believe, was published in 1835, but he continues to call it the Book of Covenants, was arranged for the printing. It was considered best to substitute fictitious names for the real names contained in certain revelations relative to the stewardship on, and I can't read this word, the stewardship on, it could be finances, on, it could be future, it's an F-I-S. Anyway, in later documents, this has been interpreted as the firm being used as a substitute for the United Order. So a stewardship, as I looked up, meant something of a trust, or a corporation or an investment pool, and that the firm meant the United Order. So you can see even at this early date of 1835, we have some pretty dishonest, nefarious people running this part of the quote unquote Mormon church. It's the Sidney Rigdon crowd. It is the Orson Pratt crowd, who later Joseph Smith stated Orson Pratt was his enemy. And what and what they appear to be doing by using these substitute names was to defraud the Eastern investors. So continuing with the letter, Orson Pratt states that the substitution was, this was done that their creditors in Dane, Hancock, New York, should not take advantage of their church finances, I'm assuming of their church firm or church finances. But now as the firm no longer exists, the members of it are mostly dead, either temporally or spiritually. Now, this is why I disagree with the interpretation of this word, firm or finances in the Orson Pratt letter as meaning the United Order, because the stewardship of the firm, the people, the participants, Orson Pratt is saying, are temporarily or uh, spiritually dead to them. And at this point in time, the United Order was not dead. It was being practiced or experimented with in Utah. I have my doubts that this word meant the United Order as practiced in Kirtland, but I do believe it refers to the Eastern investors and therefore. Would it not be wisdom to publish our next edition with the real names and places, things, and they were contained in the original manuscript, as this will not only expose Charles B. Thompson, who is as part of a schism group and using the virtual channel of Benini, it will not only expose Charles B. Thompson organization, but will be of great satisfaction to the saints. The sections containing these fictitious names are as follows. 76, 87, 94, 97, 99, and 102. Now, whether or not those agree with the present sections in the Doctrine and Covenants, I do not know. 
It is wise to have the real names restored. I should be pleased to have Brother Bullock copy from the original manuscript, the real names, and send them to by letter to me in Washington City. The most of these names I recollect, but some I have forgotten, which probably many of them have been forgotten. I rejoice greatly in the mission you have given me with honor to this cause. I have already written about 80 pages of manuscript on the peopling of worlds. Orson Pratt was really into the Kolob conspiracy. I'm going to call it the Kolob conspiracy. So he's, he, he loves that whole Kolob day to God on Kolob is the thousand years on earth. Oh, dear. So here's the Wikipedia entry for Charles B. Thompson. Charles Blanchard Thompson, 1840 to 1895, was an American leader of a schismatic sect of Latter-day Saint movement from 19, 1848 to 1858. And if you recall, Orson, Brett was writing in 1852. He claimed the title Banimi and his followers known as Banimi Mites. <laughs> um, as you recall, Orson Pratt accused Joseph of using the term Banimi as a substitute for the actual name, which he did not want to put in his revelation. Thompson was born in Niskayuna, New York to a Quaker family, as yes, there are always these Quakers. Thompson converted to Mormonism in 1835. He became an elder of the church until the death of co founder Joseph Smith Jr. In 1841, Thompson published Evidence in Proof of the Book of Mormon in Batavia, New York. Among several aspirants to be Smith's successor, Thompson initially accepted James String as the rightful leader of the Latter day Saints. However, in January of 1848, Thompson broke was straying after Thompson reported having received a revelation from God while he was in St. Louis, Missouri. Thompson began to claim that he was the reincarnation of the biblical Ephraim and that he was known as Benini, Patriarch of Zion. Thompson claimed that a revelation received by Joseph Smith in June of 1834 referred to him, and Orson Pratt did state that Joseph used the term Benini. I will soften the hearts of people as I did the heart of Pharaoh from time to time until my servant, Barak Ale and Banini, whom I have appointed, shall have time to gather strength of my house. Now remember, Orson Pratt said that Banini was a fictitious name that Joseph used to substitute the real name in his revelation. So Barak Ale is probably a fictitious name, as is Banini, but obviously they're referring to some original name that was that Joseph was trying to conceal. Thompson self-published a tract entitled The Voice of Him That Crieth in the Wilderness, Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord, and gather fifty to sixty followers around him, whom he instructed in his school of preparation. He went to the school of prophets. Thompson named his church the Congregation of Jehovah's Presbytery of Zions, and his followers were often called Benimites, because Thompson's claim to the title, the group was also called well, Kone Hesperides. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how, what that word is. In September of 1853, Thompson moved his followers to Mo Monona County, Iowa, north of Council Bluffs, where they established a communitarian commune called Preparation. Thompson enforced strict rules of behavior among his followers and published a variety, variety of periodicals while in St. Louis in the while in St. Louis and in Iowa, including Science, Harbinger, and Benini's Organ. <laughs> Preparation News and Ephraim's Messenger. In 1858, Thompson published a 208 page tract entitled Law and Covenants of Israel, written to Ephraim from Jehovah, the mighty God of Jacob, Ephraim, and Benini Proclamation in October of 1858. In October 1858, Thompson's followers ran him out of town. The property owned by the commune was the subject of a lengthy court battle, which was not resolved by the Iowa Supreme Court until 1867. Thompson ultimately ultimately moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Sydney Rigdon Territory, where in 1892, a city directory listed him as Reverend Charles B. Thompson. He died in Philadelphia in 1895. The 344-acre Preparation Canyon State Park in Iowa now occupies a space where Thompson's commune of preparation once was. The fact that Orson hired remembers Joseph Smith using the fictitious name of Banimi, lends some circumstantial evidence to my theory. Quorum of the Twelve, Charles Strang, Charles Thompson were all disruption agents. 
paid by the British oligarchs to destroy legitimate religious and political movements who were fighting against slavery, which the early Mormon Joseph Smith Church was doing. There's a whole CIA manual, and I also went through the Booz Allen training manual of how to train your agents to infiltrate, disrupt, and destroy legitimate movements, which I believe Quorum of the Twelve, the Strang Movement, Sidney Rigdon Movement, Bennett, all of these people were disruption agents who were being paid to infiltrate these movements that were moving into the western states to vote out slavery. I'm going to extend this even further to the fact my belief that the early Mormon church as developed by Joseph Smith Jr. and his family and the Mack family were counterintelligence agents employed by the U.S. government to disrupt all these frenetic fringe groups that were pro-slavery out in the Western territories. My belief is at the highest levels of the Mormon church, the Utah Mormon church, they know, they have the knowledge that they sacrificed Joseph Smith as a patsy to their movement in order to take it over and move out to Utah. Well, maybe the Utah Mormon church shouldn't play so fast and loose because perhaps the game they were playing was being played against them by Joseph Smith and the Mack family, highly educated, Dartmouth College educated bankers from Wisconsin and from Massachusetts, who, by the way, outsmarted these, these Utah local yokels by multiple generations of highly educated merchant bankers. So why would the Utah Mormon Church think that Joseph Smith and the Mack family were so dumb? Well, perhaps they're projecting their own lack of IQ points on the very well-qualified Smith and Mack families. So I'm going to place a link to these handwritten letters on archive.org. I'm going to request that everybody pour over them and see if you can do a better interpretation of them than I. I think the whole admission here that the Book of Covenants, as I call it, the Doctrine of Covenants, had been changed with fictitious names and locations, and they were 76, 87, 94, 97, 99, and 102, is extremely interesting. Also, that the Thompson, Charles B. Thompson organization using the name of Benini as their revelator was also used by Joseph Smith as substituted. Here it is. Benini, which you will at once recognize as one of the fictitious names which Joseph substituted from the real names in certain revelations. And okay, here's the explanation of Wikipedia, probably written by Mormon scholars. It says, Doctrine and Covenants 1028B, Community of Christ Edition, in LDS Church Edition, Doctrine and Covenant. The modern day LDS version of the Doctrine and Covenants has replaced the code names Barack L with Joseph Smith Jr. and Benimi with Mine Elders, in harmony with early manuscript sources. It is thought that Benimi may have originally had reference to Lyman White. Interesting, that would mean that Lyman White should have been. And then I find in Wikipedia that Barak Ale, if you look in the Book of Enoch, Barak means an astrologer, which I would assume would be Orson Pratt, the Mormon scientist, and then Banimi, they say, was Sidney Rigdon. And then when they replaced the word Enoch, that meant Joseph Smith. But then also Joseph Smith was intended by the substitute of Barack Obama. Oh, excuse me, Barack Alel. Okay, Barack Alel. Okay, so they don't have no clue right now, or they're not giving us any accurate information who these substitute names were. Now, remember, it was done to defraud creditors in the East, but now Mormon disruption agents like Charles Thompson is using the substitute names as channeled ghosts or perhaps channeling Joseph Smith after his death. Do you see how crazy the Mormon history is if you really look at it? 
This is as crazy as what we're finding today in the Middle East chaos. All right. And I hate to bring in modern day chaos, but it's the same program. Who's Allen? Bring in a lot of chaos agents, get everybody mixed up. We've got Mormons going out to Utah. We've got Mormons going to Texas. We've got Mormons going up to Wisconsin. We've got them out in Iowa, and they're all doing communes. They are channeling spirits. They are, oh, let's see, inventing planets like Kolob, and then they're going to go to the moon. This is crazy-making stuff. This is not what you would call the original, the original purpose of religion which is to bring comfort, which is to bring purpose, which is to coalesce communities in a common goal of good. What we have is a lot of crazy people blabbing a lot of sci-fi, Scientology, let's see, Christian science, just creating chaos that we're seeing now unfold in the Middle East. And yes, what is past means present. What is present is future. This is all the same chaos agents at work to destroy the humanity of us, we, the humans. No, I'm not part of an organization. I never plan to be part of any organization. And anyone who pays lip service to an organization has some real trouble in finding the truth. So, as I said, studying history is always more complex and more interesting than what you have been led to believe.